We are recording. Good morning, everybody. Happy Single Parents Day 2021. Welcome to the big Single Parents Day event brought to you by the Single Mums Business Network, aka me. Um, the reason I've done this is because I've been aware of some of these organisations and some of these organisations I haven't been aware of. And, um, you know, it's really heartbreaking. I think when you're a single parent and you're searching Google and you're trying to find what's right for you, um, whether that's for professional or personal reasons, it's really important that information is available. Um, and lots of us are hidden by no fault of our own. We're trying to be seen in hers, but we're hidden. And um, so this event is hopefully to try and help ensure that every single parent in the UK does know what their choices are does know where to go, whether that's for professional reasons, personal reasons, whether you're a single dad or a single mum. So this webinar, we're all gonna just spend four minutes each letting you know who we are, what we do, where we do it and how we can help you. It is being recorded, as I've said before, if if you've joined the meeting and you're not one of the speakers, please make sure your microphone and your camera is off. And um, if you've missed anything, don't worry, because it is recorded and it will be available um, through various internet channels afterwards. So I will start. My name is Jules. I'm the founder of the Single Mums Business Network. And I started the Single Mums Business Network in 2019 after what can only be described as a challenging journey as a single parent trying to make work work. since 2012 I set up a business I was working part-time I was working full-time um, there were barriers that uh, as far as I'm concerned were completely unnecessary for the sake of a couple of hours um, so we're here to talk about that and consequently a lot of people end up in self-employment or in business because you know the sanctuary of employment isn't an option for them when they want to work So my job is to help my members raise awareness of their businesses. I do that via imprint, um, magazine advertising, exposure through media channels. And um, also, you know, there's a very strong undercurrent with with, um, sort of campaigning, I suppose, for, for there not to be so many challenges around working and making work work as a single parent. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the webinar and I'm going to, first of all, invite Shasha from Worcestershire Solar Warriors to let us know um, about her organisation, where she operates. Um, hi, Rupert, it's lovely to have you with us. Feel free to Hello. use your camera or and microphone on if you're going to say a few words or you can turn them off. I know the invitation was open to you. so. So let's see how that goes. If your camera stays on, I'm going to assume you want to speak at some point. That's great. So, um, Sharisha, take the stage. Thank you, Julie. (laughs) Happy Single Parents Day to everyone. I'm Sharisha. I've been a single parent for the last 10 years, and it certainly has been a journey. I'm also a qualified social worker. I've been working in the field for the past 11 years. Like I said, it's been a journey balancing working nine to five alongside being a single parent, but with the support of my family and friends, and particularly single parent friends, it's just been invaluable. Um, I set up a single support parent group in 2019 after moving to the Worcestershire area for work. Um, and something that, that, that struck me was when I Googled support for single parents, there was nothing in the area. I think the, the nearest was Birmingham. Um, And obviously I was kind of struggling myself moving to a new area. And one day I sat down and I thought, I'm just gonna set my own group. If I'm feeling like this, and I'm sure other people in the area feel in the same way. Uh, And so Worcestershire Solo Warriors was born. Me and my daughter came up with a name and consequently we realized that the Worcester Warriors was the rugby team as well. So that, that was quite apt really. Um, and then a few months after that, we became um, a gingerbread friendship group. Um, so we're currently collaborating with Gingerbread. Um, we started on 60 members and now we've got 275. For me, that's just amazing and just shows the amount of single parents in the Worcestershire County. Um, we've had a 5% increase since lockdown in new members. 
and um, we were meeting at once a month um, prior to the lockdown and our last one ironically was in Mother's Day after UT and it was such an amazing day and a lot of my members said, said to me that is their one memory for lockdown was this afternoon tea and that, and that really does warm my heart. Um, we had a, um, we connected with new members and we've connected with existing members over the course of lockdown virtually. Um, and then prior to the lockdown, um, we provided essential items for some parents that are struggling. I think you all can recall the shortage of pasta, flour and toilet roll. So for single parents, that, that was a really good resource and I was very happy to help them there. Um, since lockdown, we've had some amazing virtual events, coffee mornings, and I think that's been a lifeline for most single parents in the area. Now we can't meet up. Again, prior to the lockdown, um, one of my most powerful events was a confidence workshop I arranged with a friend who was in the coaching industry. And um, a lot of people gained so much out of that. And for myself, I gained a lot, a lot about that as well. Um, so I was very happy to put that on. Um, I'm very passionate about ensuring my members feel safe and secure and have a platform to express their views and feelings. And that's me. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, Sharisha. So that's, that's really lovely. That's Sharisha Worcestershire Solo Warriors um, in Worcestershire. And um, so we're going to go to now, Zoe, Independent Mother. Do I have you? Oh, yes, I do. Brilliant. I'm so sorry, Zoe. I couldn't see you before when you can imagine the beginning of the meeting was just pure chaos trying to get the speakers in. And so, Zoe, if you want to take your four minutes, I'm keeping an eye on the time. If you're still talking 18 minutes past, I'll just give you a very unsubtle way. Yeah, okay? please do, because I've. And, uh, uh, let us know who you are and, and what you're doing, where you are, etc. I hope you can hear me because I've had some technical difficulties. So I've just negotiated my son's iPad away from him. That's probably why you couldn't find me because um, I had to make sure that I didn't say uh, my son's name there. Um, <laughs> um, yes, you can hear me okay there, right? Okay. So I'm Zoe, um, I have a chi one child, um, I've been a single parent for nearly, since pregnancy, so nearly 10 years, and um, I originally started Independent Mother back in 2019 when I noticed a common theme in messages, stations online, and um, yeah, I just felt like single mothers in particular were feeling rather put down and ashamed of the the title um single mother and their position instead of feeling proud um and that really confused me um but what it made me think that there's this kind of overwhelming need to change the narrative for single mothers um and so yeah what i'd started to do was it just started out as being events um and just focusing on getting people in a room uh, just the same way as everyone else here you can see the impact as soon as you put kind of strangers together with a common story the feeling and the empowerment that can happen just so naturally with just sharing can be so so powerful so that's how it started um but yes yeah, skip a few years um after the pandemic uh hit is a completely different situation now. And I can see like a sh quite a shift in a lot of um, uh, sections of single, single parents. Um, but what I did coming back was I, um, I, think, I think a lot of it came down to the fact that all families were suddenly thrown into isolation and they got to experience a small part of we as single parents have to feel on a daily basis it was nothing new to us you know being stuck at home and 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 all those difficult feelings so I feel like a lot of the world suddenly had a glimpse into our day-to-day -day life so together with um we've got 15 um founding members now we all came together we've all got different jobs um whether it be uh, social workers charity workers run our own business lots of different skill sets and backgrounds and we've come together to um and and set four key um 
four key um, strategies that we have as an organization. We're just fine, uh, setting up as a CIO and we've got a whole heap of support externally um, and exciting uh, opportunities coming up. But basically what we do is we take um, data and lived experiences and work out how we can approach them in an alternative way. So for example, um, our employment and support programs don't focus necessarily on the job and fitting a, trying to fit a job around pickup time. It's more about building the, the mother's confidence, their sense of self, um, and really getting those foundations right before they branch out and look at what it is that makes them feel fulfilled, um, what it is that they wanna kind of embark on in terms of a career and starting over or, or just getting a new perspective of options. Um, also, we even do things to do with like resources. It's really important in terms of empowerment to start from within that single mother and how that single mother feels about herself so and her children. So we have a book coming out that I wrote, a uh, children's book in the summer that we're working with the National Literacy Trust um, on. And it's just about retelling the story in a really positive way um, as, single, as the child of a single mother. Um, and we have things like that. We're teaming up, for example, uh, going forward, we've got a whole range of greetings cards to really celebrate Single Parents Day, just as to make sure it's just as important as Mother's Day. It's just these little kind of things that we're looking at as an organization to really make mothers feel appreciated um, because it's things like Mother's Day last week when really highlights that these, these days that people take for granted just aren't the same and they can't be celebrated in the same way, but they should be. So yeah, so that's, that's us. And you can find out more. We're just moving the website over um, to a new platform. <laughs> now I muted. So sorry, I'm really sorry. I just muted us all two seconds too soon then. But I think what I want to make clear is all to all of the participants of this webinar. Um, I'll make sure again after the webinar that those links to your websites are sent through to everybody. I'll also make sure that the links to all of your websites are on my useful information page links. So so we make sure we've got all the links to your greetings cards and the book that you've written and things like that, because it's so wonderful, it's so empowering to share. And I think that's also why it's so important for us all to come together in this way, because we offer different angles of support and we've all, you know, we've all got different experiences, different ideas. And none of us, none of us can do all of those things alone. We need to do it together to tick every box for every person, really. So, um, so that was absolutely lovely. So, Arena, you're next. It's 20 past 10. I'm going to give you till 24 minutes past 10 and wave my hands physically if you're still going. I'm sure mine will be way under. <laughs> Aruna, go for it. Hi. Okay. So, hi, I'm Aruna, the founder of the Asian Single Parents Network, KIC. Um, we're the only single parents organisation in the UK that supports both mums and dads from the South Asian community. Um, I set up ASP back in 2011 after going through two arranged marriages. Um, so my second ended in 2004. So it's been quite a while since I've been a single parent. Um, I set it up because I found at the time there wasn't a lot of support out there like there is today. I mean, you can see from this webinar alone, the amazing organizations that are available to single parents. But when I went through it, there wasn't anybody really, especially somebody who understood the cultural background um, around Asians, um, the stigma surrounding it all. Um, we didn't really speak about it. Um, so I wanted to set it up to give support to others really after everything that I'd been through um, to arrange marriages, as I say. Um, and I found many of my friends were in couples at the time as well. Um, so they didn't really understand what it's like to be a single parent. Um, so yes, and I also want a company for me, my daughter, when we went out the weekends because there wasn't anybody really to go out with at the time. And I wanted her to see there are other single parent families out there too. And I think that's important for children to see. 
So um, there's lots of stigma around divorce in Asians. So ASP offers a safe space where members can talk to others in the same boat and they don't feel judged or isolated. We have members from across the UK in all most areas, especially London and Southeast, but also Midlands and surrounding areas too. Uh, we have WhatsApp groups by different locations, so members can get to know others in the same area and meet locally. We're really active, so before Excuse it, me, my camera keeps going off. Um, before lockdown, we used to meet, day, we used to have day trips with kids. So, you know, meets in the park, to, uh, at the seaside. We also do cultural events, so they get to learn about their culture. So, Hawley, Diwali, other such things as well. Um, evening events for adults only, so dinners, Bollywood nights, etc holidays and short breaks, but you know, we don't know what's going to happen about those now. Um, we've been equally active in lockdown. So we have weekly meets every week. Um, for instance, on Thursdays, we have a parents catch up where parents can talk to others, you know, about what they're going through um, and ask for advice and support. Uh, we've been having dance meets every day to try and motivate each other to get around moving and exercise. And it's also a good way to catch up with everybody and you know, check in on each other. Um, we've done a cocktails night, which went way into the night past midnight. <laughs> um, we've had a speed dating event on Valentine's Day, coffee mornings, dad meets every month. So we're really active and we intend to carry on going in that direction really. Um, this year in September, we celebrate our 10th anniversary. Have I gone over? <laughs> so we're plan planning to have a big party, hopefully, fingers crossed, in person, and hope you can join us too. Aruna, thank you. That was so brilliant. So you, that, you had all that time, no problem whatsoever. Um, and it is so important, again, like you said, you know, I whilst I set up Single Man's Bruises Network, there are certain aspects to like the Asian community like you said that I just couldn't possibly understand it's why it's not a single dad's business network as well because I don't know what it's like to be a single dad so you know it's really important that we know about each other so that we can appropriately signpost and um, you know and do that in a really positive way so that everybody's got a choice of where to go to suit them and their individual kind of experiences um, and also um, Aruna you have agreed to be the county coordinator for Kent so Aruna is the lady who hosts the meetings in Kent for us if you attend a business meeting for the single mums business network anyway I'm going to tap on myself from talking too much as well so Zoe Frollo you're up next thanks so much for joining us and I will mute me and welcome you in thank you happy single parents day to everyone and lovely to be here and thank you Julie for bringing us all together today. Um, so I became a single parent almost four years ago when my son had just turned one and I really wasn't prepared for how isolating and lonely I would find the experience to be. So despite having you know, the support of friends and family, I didn't know any other single parents at the time. So which kind of compounded the isolation, the loneliness, the stigma, the, you know, suddenly started wishing away the weekends because I found it so triggering seeing families everywhere. And um, I really craved knowing other people in the same situation so that it would be easy to organize play dates and, you know, chat to people who could understand the sort of highs and lows of the single parenting experience. And the more I thought about this, having this kind of support network with other people who understood it, the more it kind of gave me hope. And um, so when I kind of went to Google to start trying to find how to access that, I was surprised to see that there wasn't a very kind of simple and easy way to do it by way of an app that connects you to like-minded single parents in your area and a wider community for support. So I found lots of Facebook groups and things like that, but they didn't feel um, they they didn't feel kind of like that positive, empowering experience or make it easy for me to find what I was looking for. So it was out of that 
that Frollo kind of started to come into my head. And then once I realized that one in four families are single parent families, it made me even more frustrated thinking there's probably people living on my street that are single parents and I just have no way of identifying who they are. So um, so that's how the idea of Frollo came to be. So basically Frollo um, is an app that connects single parents to like-minded single parents living in the same area by way of location, proximity, kids age and shared interests. There's also um, a wider community that you can access for guidance, support, advice. And there's a meetup section where you can find or create in real life or virtual meetups. So some are hosted by community members, could be games night, Friday night drinks, um, virtual dad's pub, or could be expert meetups like family lawyer sessions, child psych psych psychologists, um, relationship experts and things like that. And then there's a meetup section, or sorry, a, a messaging section where you can join group chats and um, message your private connections. So we have 20,000 users now across the UK and Ireland. And um, yeah, and it's been great and it's proved to be an invaluable source of online support for many single parents, especially during the last year. Um, so yeah, it's, it's had an amazing impact in my life personally and really kind of love that my son is now around and has access to, you know, other kids of single parents. So it's, it's normalizing it for him. It's normalized it for me. It's normalized it for the other people in my life. And yeah, I just think having access to, to a community is, is so empowering. So yeah, that's, that's Frodo. Sorry, thank you so much. It's brilliant. And, you know, there's so many things as I'm sure we're all resonating as we're hearing each other speak. I'm sure we're all resonating with certain things that are being said. And, um, you know, it's the positive community, like you said, you know, we've all kind of come through this. The only kind of thing you see about single parenting is very negative and it's very work shy, very lifestyle choice, very. And, you know, when we need a lot more positive press, there, like you said, it's one in four of us. You know, most of us are very professional, hardworking people, even if we're not, sometimes life works the other way around, you know, that's not to be sort of scorned at, we need to help them through. And, um, you know, we need those positive environments, we need those positive platforms. And again, like what I do with the Single Moms Business Network, it's not so much a support network. I don't want to be chatting to, to people all night on an app because that's not the way I roll. I'm actually quite antisocial. So Frollo is so brilliant. All of these things are so brilliant for signposting with different things. Um, and of course, I'm I'm doing them. Um, I've done a couple of sessions with you now. I'm doing one next week on the 24th to talk about making work work as a single parent and all the different variants of full time, part time, getting off universal credit. Da, 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 da. So it's really lovely you facilitate that platform. And again, it's really important for us all to understand some of us work as businesses. So of course there's going to be a fee for the services we provide. Some of us work as charities, so we need to help each other raise the funds to be able to support what we're doing. And um, you know, and I think we all need to respect those different angles, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There was something else I was gonna say there, but I've forgotten it. So I'll go straight over to Noreen. After Noreen, I want to come in and ask Yolanda to say a couple of words. And um, so Noreen, if you take the mic, boom, I'll give you until 10.35. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and distinguished guests, Rupa Huck MP. It's lovely to see you again uh, after a while. I hope Connie and Michelle and Shafi are well as well. We last met at the APBG launch. Um, thank you all for your time. Um, as Jules has said, my name's Noreen Khan. Um, I launched the organization called NISI, and Jules is actually one of the only people that ever pronounces it correctly. So because I'm Scottish, a lot of people think it's Nessie and I'm not the Loch Ness Monster, be rest assured. Um, but Nessie is actually just the nickname of my son. I wanted to ensure that my son didn't feel like he was the only child in a, coming from a single parent background. And as you've already, the esteemed guests have already mentioned, um, you know, I resonate with everything from it being to taboo um, to the emotional stances um, that's involved in there. 
So back in 2011, five and a half months pregnant, I found myself a victim of um, domestic abuse um, and left destitute, had to start my life all over again. Um, and it was quite a different journey because a lot of people think some, some of these trends are quite habitual, it's quite generational. Um, you know, my past um, prior to becoming a victim was very privileged. I'd worked very hard and suddenly became a nobody with no self-worth and no self-confidence whatsoever. So I had to restart uh, my life. Um, and in 2016, February of 2016, I launched NISI. Um, we have now grown as a, a platform for facilitating prosperity for single mothers. Um, we uh, work across Bradford where we launched. Uh, we have mothers from all backgrounds, currently supporting over 4,000 mothers in Bradford, but also branched out into Oldham, Birmingham, Liverpool and London. And we have 14 satellite offices across the globe as well. So the, 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 the whole notion of the way that we have grown over the last five months has been quite phenomenal. And what's been our framework is that we um, uh, really, uh, as much as facilitating the prosperity around emotional support and economic Support. So it's like your mental health and well-being and then your support into working it's really about alleviating the stresses on the public services for us as well so ensuring that we can get people back into work to reducing the number of people um you know uh, reliant upon um, benefits uh, we've got over 250 mothers into self-employment over the last five years as well as the whole self-help self-care um methods to uh, alleviate the stresses on the waiting rooms at the hospital so it's very key that you know Yolanda's coming next from the NHS because we really do work very closely with them and also ensuring that the right services um, from a justice um, uh, perspective um, is there as well. So it's been quite a phenomenal journey. Of course, I, I don't need to go through the emotionals um, of, of the journey I went through. Everyone has so eloquently already mentioned that. And it is exactly um, about trying to stand up and make that difference. I was tokenized as um, a bad luck individual in Bradford. In some communities, if you're a single mother, you don't get invited to weddings. You don't get invited to parties because you are that token of bad luck. So it's about changing that rhetoric and ensuring that we can, um, you know, just prove that sometimes being a single mother, you are more privileged, you have double the love, um, you know, from your child. And uh, again, Jules, as you rightly said, a lot of people say that there's lots of single dads there as well. Absolutely. But I, I'm not a dad, uh, you know, uh, as, as you say. So um, we encourage all the other men to certainly look out um, for other sports. Now that we've been connected with some great organisations here, we can also, you know, divert them to them as well. Um, we don't just support single mothers. We then had to diversify very quickly into women who are married, but there's absent fathers present. Um, so they may be living in the same household, but they're very much very disconnected from the family element. And that too causes an emotional vacuum in the household. Um, so we've been privileged enough to have, have been uh, in some platforms in, in Parliament. We've produced papers um, for the Centre for Social Justice. Um, and, you know, we have very, very close links um, with a lot of people um, in the capital who's helping us with our movement. So that's Nisi. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to hearing about more. It's so lovely to hear you speak, Noreen. And, you know, Noreen is, is such a great support, a supporter as well of Single Mother's Business Network. I mean, this whole collaboration thing, it's so much better when we work together. Nisi signposted a couple of people to me for my, uh, Noreen, <laughs> Nisi, <laughs> signposted a couple of people to me for my 12-week programme, which is accountability and business growth to help people move into business. Um, one, one of my big frustrations with the single parent status is that we need upskilling. Yes, there are probably a minority that do need upskilling, but most of us are qualified, professional, you know, highly, highly, highly intelligent. And, you know, the only barriers that we face are those barriers to probably 0.7 or 0.8 full time equivalent of work. And um, that's why Trace is here and she'll tell you more about that now. The reason it frustrates me so much and the reason I'm saying this right now before we bring Yolanda in is I'm a very, very proud UK taxpayer, always have been, always will be, from the age of 14. Now, um, you know, when I spent all those 25 years, 20 years paying tax before I became a single parent, I never wanted to have to withdraw it because employers wouldn't let me work 30 hours instead of 37.5 hours forced to take time for lunch. All of that money unnecessarily that I then had to claim towards housing benefit or universal credit or working tax credits or whatever, that could have gone to paying that NHS workers more. 60 odd million adults in the UK, if we paid four pounds each, the NHS workers would get 800 pounds more in their salary. There's like 300,000 of them. 
So why on earth, for the sake of flexibility in the workplace, are we forced into a situation where we're out of uh, salaried incomes and into a situation where we're needing to claim tax back that we paid for people who actually can't work, who have got physical or mental disabilities or need to care for people or putting our money into paying people like the NHS workers properly. So that's why when Yolanda contacted me and said, can I come and speak for a minute about something at the NHS? Um, I said, yeah, of course you can, you know, absolutely. You can have a little platform and you can have it with a crown. So Yolanda, take the stage and tell us what it is that you want to let us know today. Thank you so much, Jules. What an amazing group, really enjoying being part of this. So um, yeah, I'm Yolanda. I work for the NHS in the comms team in West Essex. Um, so the NHS have got a plan to um, diagnose cancer early. So I'm part of this um, new project. Um, and one of the best ways of diagnosing cancer early is through screening. So they run three um, programmes for breast, bowel and cervical screening. Um, my background is actually marketing and the NHS brought me in two months ago to focus purely on a comm strategy to try and improve um, screening uptake. So our first campaign is going to focus purely on encouraging women to attend their cervical screening or smears as most of us will probably know them as. So um, we're going to have a dedicated strategy that will look at different messaging um, and different uh, strategies around channels and things like that, just purely looking at how we try and get this uptake. And the reason I wanted to come and speak to this group in particular, because in West Essex, um, we've seen our biggest decline in cervical screening amongst young mums. Um, so we plan to launch a campaign across West Essex, looking at how we encourage young mums, particularly with young children, to take this potentially life-saving test. You know, why is it they're not they're not kind of coming forward for their test? We recognise that there's probably lots of barriers around time constraints, you know, juggling childcare work, et cetera. But it may be as simple as they can't um, get an appointment. So how do we sort of improve that? And how do we recognise what these barriers are just to, you know, just to help working mums and young mums kind of come forward? So um, to get the project underway, I wanted to speak to this group and just ask for some help, really, and just see what your experiences are. Um, you know, what are the barriers, you know, are there barriers that you've come across um, and how do you find the screen in itself? But also, so I've got a survey that will be online that you guys can take part in. But also when we're developing our comm strategy, it'd be really great to have like a focus group so that when we're looking at new messaging or look, trying to discover the barriers or um, looking at new initiatives, it'd be great to have this group to, to sort of feed through and kind of help us make our decisions. Um, so all of that information is going to be online if you want to take part. Um, thank you so much for listening. I'm really looking forward to working with some of you in the future. And just a reminder, if you haven't, please go for your smear, encourage your friends and family and just stay safe. Thank you so much. Please excuse me. My screen literally just did a shift at the point. I was about to mute you then and everything moved. So. <laughs> Um, Yolanda, thanks so much. And of course, um, as I promised, when after this meeting, as well as sending the links to all of our websites, I'd also send the link to your survey. I've done the survey. It literally takes two seconds. It's just a couple of questions. Personally, I know that when my daughter was younger, my biggest concern was I really didn't want that while my daughter was in the room with me. And you just haven't got the adequate childcare before school. Um, you know, so so really, it's just if even if the doctor said you could have a child minds it in the reception area so that you, the baby can just play and be entertained for a minute in a safe environment while you go and do that in private. Um, but yeah, it's a really important message. I know my cousins just come through it again and um, it's really, really important. So thank you so much. And we'll share everything and, and we'll work with you thereafter. So um, Ruth, I'm gonna bring you in a little bit later because I would really like you to, to reflect on what we're all saying, if you don't mind. So I'm going to go straight to Ruth. Ruth, um, single parents' rights. Um, where are you? There, you're there. Right, hang on a minute. Right, I bow to you. <laughs> I really do because the thing is, is, is you know, I've been blogging since 2016. I set up the Single Mums Business Network in 2019. What I've always said in all my blogs and all my posts, I don't do research. I don't do stats. 
you know what you do is absolutely incredible it's so hard to do what you do and to get the information you've gathered and to and you've got i've put it in my magazine today you've got hackney council to sign off on on protecting on supporting this protecting the characteristics so i know you'll tell us all about that but you know tell us how you're gonna you, you can't do all this for free tell us how you're gonna get paid for this please and um, take the stage and let's support you because what you're doing on your own is amazing and it should have been done a long time ago by people who've got lots of friends to do it so i'm very club cross and i'm making that quite clear so ruth take the stage thank you so much jules thanks everyone for coming today and thank you so much for organizing this event um yeah i'm, I'm not sure i'm going to be able to tell you how i get paid but um yeah i'll just kick off with telling you about um single parent rights so i'm a solo mum similar to Jules, started blogging quite a while ago. I've been a solo mum for almost seven years now. And I started blogging because it was like single parents are quite invisible. People don't understand it. Obviously, in lockdown, that really kind of escalated. Um, and I happen to live not far from Dominic Cummings. So unfortunately for him and fortunately for us, I decided to um, drop a handwritten letter out over to him about how challenging lockdown was as a single parent. Short, cut, cutting a long story short, that helped to lead to support bubbles and I did some lobbying with number 10. But what really came out of that for me and many other single parents was that the issue is we're not, um, we're not supported in the foundations of the Equality Act. So when we are discriminated, it's not legally considered discrimination, even though it happens a lot, even though married people and those in civil partnerships are protected. So for me, I kind of then pivoted from just writing about these issues to trying to really lobby and campaign on it. We've got a very clear ask. It's to add single parents to the Equality Act. The reason we need to do this is because for generations, we've talked about the poverty within single parent families. And absolutely, that needs addressing. Welfare state needs addressing all these things. But underneath this, there's systemic discrimination and stigma. And unless we address that, we're not going to get treated fairly and equally. The research Jules was mentioning, so I started a survey. Actually, Amy, who's here, um, she was the one from Single Parent Wellbeing who suggested a survey. I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds simple. But then over a thousand respondents later and a lot of data crunching and many, many hours and quite a few tears, I'll be honest, um, the research was out. Up to 80% of single parents face discrimination, which is shocking. Um, there's a lot of intersectionality as well which basically means if you're a black single parent, if you're a single parent of colour, if you're a single parent living with a disability, if you're on lower income, those rates of discrimination raise even higher. So it's really something that needs to be addressed. I'm trying to build this movement. We had a great event last night and it's not, it's not about me. It's not about any one individual. It's about getting people to take action. So on the website, there's four key actions. Sign the petition, write to your MP, um, share your stories and also this motion with the council it's basically just getting your local council to support the motion um, I'll share the web it's singleparentrights.org so I'll share the link in the chat but yeah singleparentrights.org and on the main page there's all these links for actions um, there's also a page called my rights that has got some links for where you can go if you're facing discrimination there's going to be an activist page coming soon but yeah, really, we just need all hands on deck. So if you've just got a few minutes, you can take the actions yourself. If you've got more time and skills to commit, then we'd love to have you on board behind the scenes. If you're an organisation, join us. Thank you. Ruth, thanks. Thank you so much. Um, it really is brilliant what you're doing. You know, we all applaud you. Um, and also, you like I said um, some of you have joined later all of these links will be sent in an email afterwards they're also in the magazine that I published there's live links that clicks through to Ruth's um, campaign and her, her links to lobby your own MP um, etc etc sign the petition that's that's all included in all of my literature as well but I'll also put the direct links in this email afterwards to, to Ruth's work um, so we're going to we're going to move around quite swiftly because um, obviously time short. We started late, so we will be finishing a little bit late, but not too late. And um, so Amy, if you want to come in, and again, this is what's so important. I didn't know about Amy until last week. 
Now, I've been searching the internet for single parent support staff for, for years, and this is why we all need to work together because we're so hidden and we shouldn't be hidden. And so it's really lovely to meet you. It's really lovely to know you exist. And I'm really excited that more people will hopefully know you exist on the back of today. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, so I, happy Single Parents Day, everyone. I'm Amy. I'm one of the directors at Single Parents Wellbeing. So we are a completely peer-led organisation. So I'm a single parent, the rest of the directors, the advisory group are all single parents. So our aim is to offer a compassionate and positive and empowering approach to being a single parent. And everything we do focuses on mental health and wellbeing. So our message is that super, uh, single parents are superheroes. So we started off in 2017, um, when me and the other director were really struggling with our mental health and the stigma of being a single parent. And we were really desperately feeling that isolation and, and loneliness. So we started with outdoor meetups and walks where we'd meet other single parents, single parent families and explore like our lovely country whales. Um, they're still around now when we're allowed to go out. Um, and this then developed into sort of more outdoor meetups and online and an online exercise project. Um, and it was just really felt sort of like the power of meeting other single parents and building a community and, a, and building like a second family almost just felt so empowering. So we then moved on to um, wellbeing workshops, which are six weeks of sort of thought provoking and empowering tips and tools around subjects that come up for single parents. We run other workshops, which are mostly run by the single parent members. So really using like the wealth of experience and knowledge in our group. For example, we had one recently around um, separating um separating and parenting apart workshops we've had diy workshops anger workshops creativity and crafting workshops a book club um, and we're holding one um soon around inter internet safety so and all the ideas come from the group um and we've we during lockdown we've managed to sort of um successfully move everything online as well um so yeah, so when we can, we also have meetups and chances to socialize. We go on holidays, trips, um, and yeah, so yeah, like another chance for single parents to sort of build connections and make other friends with like single parent families. So we, we try and get as many peer lead and wellbeing ambassador volunteers on board. And also we offer free training for this and we have a campaigning group which fed into what Ruth, the brilliant work that Ruth is doing, and it's all led by volunteers. So there's lots of opportunities to get involved in sort of a really meaningful way. Um, we also have an amazing online community of single parents that really get behind what we do and spread our message of compassion and positivity. Uh, we've just launched our resources page which offers sort of loads of information, blogs, books, podcasts, and links to other organizations as well. Um, so the only criteria we have to get involved is that you're a single parent and you live in Wales. So we leave it up to you to define what a single parent is and we welcome everyone. So you can find us across social media, Single Parents Wellbeing, or our website is singleparentswellbeing.com. So yeah, that's us, thank you. Yeah, Amy, thank you so much. It's really lovely. And um, it's, we've got, I've got a member um, operating in Wales, Fabian, the coordinator for the, for the business network meeting meetup. So we'll have to make sure you know about that as well. Um, and perhaps we can share, you know, information there. So um, Nav, thank you so much for waiting patiently. I, I haven't brought you guys in late on purpose. It's just the way I did posting. It's an easy way to manage myself. So it's lovely to have some dads in the room. I'm so pleased because, you know, again, we, we all sort of, we're tribal and we need to have testosterone groups and feminine uh, estrogen groups. So it's lovely to have some dads representing in the room. So Nav, take the stage. Thank you very much, uh, Jules. Uh, and thank you very much for inviting me along to this. So uh, I'm here to talk about uh, the charity, which I set up called Dads Unlimited. A bit of background behind it was 
I became a single parent uh, about eight years ago now, uh, when my son was uh, come to, he had been moved to come and live with me. But before that, you know, I went through quite an acrimonious uh, divorce. It was really, really difficult. It was a hell of a lot of parental conflict and a hell of a lot of issues. Uh, you know, and uh, I attempted to take my life twice during that process. Thankfully, I didn't succeed in any of those attempts, but it really resonated with me, the effect of mental health on, on family breakdown. Uh, and the fact that, you know, when I became a single dad, I was just on my own. I, I was absolutely struggling with feelings of loneliness, feelings of isolation. You know, I would do the school runs. I didn't really meet anyone. All my friends were at work. And it became a very, very difficult process. And of course, you know, I didn't have any help. I didn't have a support network. And I didn't have anything, anyone to come and help me or do anything. So I have set up Dads Unlimited just because I wanted to reach out, see what else is out there. And if there wasn't, let's do something together to try and help men because you know we're not very good at opening up but if we do open up we will get support so our mission is to improve outcomes for the children of separated parents within a healthy and positive co-parenting environment you know following family breakdown we primarily help dads but have also supported mums and grandparents and guardians the issues which we deal with on a daily basis are poor mental health domestic abuse child protection feelings of loneliness and isolation as i said because us men are just rubbish at developing our own support networks following family breakdown, as well as provide services that deal with self-harm and suicide ideation. We provide wraparound support on all of these issues and focus on making sure the voice of the child is at the heart of the family breakdown process. We work with many statutory agencies over the years, central and local government, the NHS and public health, to recognise parental conflict of the health and social care issues. And last week, we were privileged to be uh, part of the APPG on parental conflict. We work hard to reduce the alarming rates of male suicide. We are based in Kent, and Kent has the highest rates of male suicide in the country. We are a national outlier, but that doesn't mean that other counties aren't struggling. So we do a lot of work to try to help those men who are, who are really struggling with their mental health, who are ideating and are going through family breakdown. We also raise awareness of the effect on mental health as a result of family breakdown. And we also do a lot of work with our local police force and with other police forces around the country to support male victims of domestic abuse because these men just don't really complain to the police and are finding it very difficult to uh, to complain about their problems and of course during the pandemic in the last year we have seen a 162 percent increase in the numbers of men coming forward complaining we also put in, in early intervention work which is funded by the nhs local authorities and local government around parental conflict so we can improve co-parenting our vision is that children from separated families have an equal opportunity through a positive co-parenting environment. As a result, we have one-to-one -one mentoring services, pastoral services, support group meetings, mental health counselling, family court support, domestic abuse support, co-parenting programme, and community activities and events, uh, which are at the moment virtual, but we hope to bring them back face-to-face -face soon. In the last four years, we have supported over 1,000 families across the UK, including 840 plus dads, 92 plus mums, some grandparents and guardians too. We have helped 327 male victims of domestic abuse and we have diverted 213 men away from suicidal thought. But most importantly, the most important number is that we have improved co-parenting for 1,996 children across England and Wales. And we do that as a charity through our donations, through the grants that we receive and the support we get from local authority and central government. So. That's our story, wish through it. Uh, I'm happy to put all the details of what we do on the chat. Uh, but yeah, thank you for listening and uh, thank you for inviting me onto this, Jules. Uh, now, thank you so much. It literally makes me want to cry. You know, you see the comments come in, like Nahaya says, she knows three guys that have, uh, that have taken their own lives, you know, just in, in her family in the Kent area. Obviously, I'm sure Runa will raise awareness in the Kent area, but it, you need to be national. And this is what upsets me so much. Why, why does everybody in the UK not know about you? Why are we not given this prime time exposure? I have been emailing the government, royalty, ITV, Channel 5, all of these channels for two years, begging, 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 let people know we exist, let people we know here. People are committing suicide. People need to know these support networks are here. The men that probably wouldn't have committed suicide if they'd known about you a few years ago, the single parents now that probably wouldn't commit suicide if they knew about all of us and what we do and where we are. You know, we're being let down catastrophically 
by people who are trusted and some people who are funded to make sure that people know we exist and people are taking their lives and it's heartbreaking it's got to stop it's got to stop now so now thank you so much for what you do you know no doubt you have saved people we've lost some but no doubt you've saved some as well um we're going to have it that's it's really i find it very very emotional you know today isn't some willy-nilly thing today is happening because it's needed because you've been hidden and you shouldn't be hidden none of us should be hidden tracy on a really lighter note tracy is one of these angels who batters employers and says you need to employ people flexibly but it causes us mental health problems it causes us stress problems it causes tax problems it has a massive impact on the circular economy you know the simplest thing that could solve a lot of these stresses with single income households i come from a co-parenting family i've got a very good relationship with my dad and a very good relationship with my mum both brought up separately i love them both it worked well because they communicated with each other they got on very well so now if you you know it's a really important message that you're relaying there and everybody needs to take that on board um, you know, uh, so anyway, Tracy, I'm going to zip me again. Take the stage. <laughs> Thank you so much, George, for inviting me today. And what an amazing bunch of people. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name's Tracy Adams, and I'm here representing 10 to 2. Um, that stands for the working hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, we're a specialist recruitment agency. Uh, it started in 2007. We are national. So we have jobs all over the country. Um, I just happen to be in the Gloucestershire Southwest area, but we are a national organisation. Um, and it was originally established to try and help career women or women, women, women get back into a career after they've had children on a part time basis around caring commitment. I mean, the world's moved on and we've now got all sorts of people registered with us, both dads, mums, grandparents. We have people who are retiring early all sorts of people who want to work part-time um, for whatever reason and obviously I've come across Jules and we've talked a lot about this and you know for single parents um, it is really difficult to get those hours that work for you um, so the roles that we find are anything in a sort of professional capacity from HR, marketing, sales, office base, admin, um, all the way through from sort of admin level through to director level and we are finding that Sadly, because of the pandemic, it's accelerated the whole flexible working, but we were finding this market was improving. There are lots of clients who are not open to it at all, and that's one of the half of my job is battling with companies, businesses, to try and get them to create flexible roles for people. And half of my job is the fun part, which is actually placing people in roles that really make a difference to their lives. So, you know, the working pattern 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is one pattern. There's all sorts of patterns that work for people in different ways. The utopia would be to have term time working only. That is rare, but there are businesses who can annualize hours and reduce that down a bit as well um, so that your summer holiday, holiday working is less. Um, so that's what we do. And the other stuff we do is if you're a candidate with us and you're registered with us, um, we do have tons of free webinars and support and events, live events when they come back, helping you with CV writing, cover letters, interview techniques. So if you're ever nervous about going back to work, we've got all of that information on hand that can help you for free as well. So you know, do pop along to the website, have a look at what we've got. And, and it is changing. The market is slowly changing, not as quickly as we want it to, but it is slowly getting there. More employers are now thinking a bit more flexibly. Um, so yeah, that's me, Tracy Adams, 10 to 2. Uh, Tracy, again, thank you so much. It's great because hearing you speak, it really prompts me to kind of, you know, this is such a huge issue because when you are offered part time pro rata work after it doesn't matter what your skill set or your salary scale was pre having a prime being a primary carer you're forced into these low skilled and low paid roles. And that's why I really celebrate what you do, because you help us maintain that that career level that we were at, you know, on a simple pro rata basis. And these companies need to take more um, responsibility for the economic impact of their stubbornness because by refusing the pro rata work what they are doing is they are feeding into a society that is reliant on benefits so they have very limited economic responsibility and the government needs to put pressure on them to say look you need to offer all of these roles at all skill sets and all salaries at 0.8 FTE at the very least 
And, um, you know, and I think the school holidays is a good point. I know the government are talking about changing the school year so that because it's, you know, we're not living in the in the 20th century anymore where the children need to work on farms through the summer. There's no need for the for the long summer break, really. So I know they're addressing that one. And um, it's just brilliant what you do. I celebrate this. The company is so important to raise awareness of recruitment agencies like you because when you're a single parent when you go onto social media when you say i'm desperate for working school hours you are inundated with at least 300 posts of people asking you to work for them for free it is wrong there's no corporate responsibility and we need to make sure that everybody knows about ethical recruitment agencies such as tend to so that everybody can work for a salary with pension you know and all the protected uh, characteristics that come with employment so thank you so much, Tracy. Right, Bob, I know you told me to manage you, so I am going to be brutal. I'm going to wave my arms frantically after four minutes and uh, go for it. The stage is yours. Morning, everybody. Um, yeah, Bob, I co-direct a not-for-profit community interest company called Only Mums and Only Dads. My co-director is Rebecca, who um, passes her hello to everybody, too. Bit of background, um, I became a single parent in 2004, two daughters then aged four and seven. Um, they're now both left home and at university, and for those with younger children, I can tell you single parenting doesn't stop. Um, only mums and only dads, um, we do many things, but I'm just going to tell you about three we um try and shine a light into that murky world of how couples separate and divorce um we co-edited with a consultant child psychologist um this book 101 questions answered about separating with children the whole tenor of the book is how to put children first and how to try and avoid family course if at all possible. Um, it's 380 pages written, it's all been crowdsourced. It's written um, by about 120 professionals from the family justice sector, including um, judges, barristers, mediators, solicitors. A great resource. Um, it costs from fifteen pounds or twenty pounds. Um, many parents we find can't afford this resource, so we we are doing a bit of a fundraiser um, whereby um, we can give these books to people who are newly separating um, or divorcing. The other thing we've set up, and we set this up at the start of COVID, is something we call our Green Phone Initiative. Um, that's a domestic abuse initiative, and it means any parent, grandparent um, in the UK can access an initial free conversation with a lawyer a solicitor specialising in domestic abuse. Um, over the years of running our organisation, we, we know that many people do not understand the way the law can offer support to victims of domestic abuse. So they, they might not know about prohibitive steps order or occupation orders or non-molestation orders. The 160 solicitors we've got working on this scheme of donating their time will spell out the legal options open to anybody that's male or female the other thing we do with rebecca and this perhaps is the core of our work is we don't can't we're not resourced to offer wraparound advice but we have become competent at giving that initial steer to divorcing separating people um all of our work we try and keep child focused and above all balanced so it's only mums and dads um 
Thank you, Barbara. It's really wonderful to hear. And in fact, it's so, so important because, of course, a lot of people and it, it was, you know, it's well publicised over COVID. A lot of people are in domestic abuse situations and it shouldn't be that if you shouldn't be in a relationship for financial purposes. So we need to be and make sure that we can thrive and survive as single parent households so that so that it is easy to leave it in an abusive relationship, you know, without the panic of how am I actually going to survive without being in destitution. So all of these things interlink. And uh, of course, we don't really have legal aid and such like anymore. So it's really important also to know the resources you've got there for legal support. So thank you for that. Again, we're going to be sharing all of this information. We're going to make sure that all of you know where to find all of this. This will be recorded. You can watch it back to remind yourselves, etc., etc. I'll swiftly move on. Um, Rupert, um, I'm so glad you're still here. I just want to check. I was going to put you on at the end. Can I just check with you? Are you okay for about another 15 minutes or do I need to bring you in now? Because I don't want to lose you. I'm really delighted. Yeah, I just you. wanted to know roughly what our timings are. Sorry, it took me ages to join because it, it wouldn't let me through the event bright link. But yeah, 15 minutes is okay. Okay, great. Yeah, I've got a hungry offspring all around me. But, oh, bless yeah. you. Yeah, okay. same as <laughs> Thank you so much, because we was obviously hoping to do it condensed 10 to 11. Naturally, I think we're doing quite well as we are with, with the amount of speakers we've got. So um, I'm glad you're not leaving. We really want you to take the stage. So we're going to go next to Nicola, um, Single Parent Support Support and Advice Services. Nicola, where are you? I can't see you. Oh, where is Nicola, Single Parent Support and Advice Services? Right, we'll come back to Nicola in a minute. Oh, in which case, um, Rupert, so Dr. Rupert, right. Uh, Noreen did this really well. How do you pronounce your surname? I'm just going to embarrass myself and ask. Do you remember that, right? Connie Hock from Blue Peter? That is my kid sister. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Noreen was at an event that we had in the House of Commons. Must be 24 months ago, I guess, if it was actually on the day two years ago. And Connie was our celebrity, as was Shappy Corsandi, and I think we had a token man, Adrian Childs, came along and spoke about his experiences as a single dad. Yeah. So, so, Huck, so Huck, I accept. So Huck, I mean, look, Huck. I've uh, Huck is with a U. It's, it's from the Arabic word Al Hakim for lawgiver, in fact. So it means truth. My name is truth. Not many politicians can say that. So, what I want to do is I want to just introduce you properly. So, Dr. Rupert, Huck, 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 I'm so sorry, <laughs> is, um, is, the, is the chair of the single parent or parent or all parent parliamentary group. Um, no, it's really exciting because like I said, we've been banging on doors for years trying to be seen and trying to be heard and trying to be taken seriously about the challenges that we've got um, as single parents. So it's really wonderful that you're here, you know, as a, as a basically government official to kind of listen to what we've got to say. Um, and um, and to take a note and to show that you actually really care as well. It's very, very important. It probably make all of us cry after we hang up. So if you'd like to sort of take the stage and, um, and and speak for a couple of minutes and then hopefully we can come back to Nicola if I find her again, okay? Thank you, Jules. Look, I'm not gonna elongate it or anything, um, but no, thanks for giving me a platform here and uh, happy single parent family day, everyone. Mother's Day this time last week and uh, this time this week, single parents day. Uh, look, the APPG, again, these mysterious acronyms, what does it mean? or party parliamentary group. And there are different types of groups in Parliament. So there are the um, select committees that you see on TV giving people a grilling, like the man from Sports Direct. And I think uh, Rupert Murdoch got gunged with a bucket of slime in one of those select committee meetings. Those ones have got, um, they can subpoena witnesses and they produce reports. Whereas the APPGs are more like interest groups. You know how like, if you were at uni and at Freshers' Fair, you can start a society for anything. So we realised in 2017, actually a whole new intake of people had come, including Rosie Duffield, Antonia um, Antonazzi um, and others, that there had never been an APPG on single parent families. We put that word in because there are right wing people as well who, you know, if they think it's a as we were saying, it's really interesting to hear all the different testimonies today, this idea that there's been very negative stereotypes, that these are just pram-faced people sponging off the state. So we put the word families in it as well, because all party groups are people from all different, across the house, you can't just have your mates from, I am a Labour MP myself, I'm an opposition MP. But there are groups on cider, on curry, you know, there are these interest groups on every manner of things. But we just realised that, I mean, as it is, women are, ignored in policy making. It's always the man from the ministry 
the bureaucrat from the council. You know, they don't think about women's perceptions. And I actually, I've got a thing in the Sunday Telegraph today talking about safety post the, the Sarah Everett maiming. Let's not be blunt. Yeah, let's be blunt about it. You know, women fe feeling unsafe on the streets, perceptions. And if you add on to that, the single parent dimension as well. Sorry, I know we've got valiant dads here too. Yes, you can be both. We work with Dad's House, which are a group in Kensington as well, which I can link you into, Jules, if you like. Um, but, you know, these things are ignored. And again, as a parent, I mean, I remember explaining to a uni friend, oh, I'm, I've met another mutual uni friend of ours, we're going for a play date. And he was like, what's that, a trip to the theatre? You know, there's a whole other world that you inhabit as a parent, as it is. And then you layer on, as people have said, you know, when they feel a bit of a spare part, when everyone else is in couples at the weekend. Um, so, yes, the idea was to put those legislative issues on the agenda. So the kind of um, issues that we've tackled, things like the two parent limit, I mean, just cruel and inhumane. Herod would be proud. Um, so uh, we, we do things jointly with other groups. The other day we had one with the uh, APPG for personal debt. Um, because and it was really interesting again like today I have learned a lot from what I've heard today um, there were people talking about coercive control you think of in an emotional sense you know you fear the keys in the door when that person is coming back but there are people years even after a formal split who can have power over the other partner for financial reasons um, and and I have to say Jules the work you do if you put together the Venn diagram of business and single parents, both of those are very sort of courageous, risk-taking things. To be running a business now in the situation we have, there's three million people, self-employed and freelancers that have had no support for a year now. Um, and we've been banging on government's door for all this. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just wanna say, I, I've been really inspired by what I've heard. I was in listening mode really um rather than anything else and you know happy to be your voice in parliament um we've met with noreen when she came in as i say two years ago so in previous years this day we have made a big thing of it even this time last year i think it was just the start of coronavirus theresa may and caroline notes from the women and equalities um committee and dawn butler posed uh, for a photo with a cardboard thing saying how we support single parents and I had a PMQ to, uh, to Boris Johnson and everyone said that's some serious shade there because I was saying, you know, he's committed to support all families. Can you remember single parent families in this crisis? And, you know, it, it has meant different ways of working for all of us in the last year. Uh, weirdly, we have more access as MPs. So I'm a backbench opposition MP, so I'm not quite government. In fact, I'm, yeah, the other side who are sort of always banging on at them. but. Um, we have a lot of meetings now with ministers like this, like this one we've got now. Um, and I think we've got in some ways more access. I mean, it often feels the Tory MPs are on there just to say, you're doing a great job, fantastic, fantastic. But we have flagged issues um, with them. And um, so yeah, sort of use us as your sounding board, sort of issues and things that, that we should be Looking at someone, meant, I was writing down notes with what everyone was saying. Someone mentioned, you know, going on trips with groups. Again, local authorities. I used to do the same. I remember going to Brighton uh, with a local um, children's centre. They've all been slashed to the bone. A lot of local authorities and things like children's services are seen as a soft touch. That's the first thing to go um, when they do this. So yeah, we do need to keep the pressure on government. Um, yes, the vaccination program is rolling out very successfully and that's all good. But I think they're hoping that we'll have forgotten all the other mistakes, this crisis that has been incredibly gruelling on women who are juggling the homeschooling as well as trying to keep down a job at the same time. And, and I think there is research that, sorry, we've got the dads here as well. They may not like to hear this. Um, countries where the head of state has been a woman have had a better record in general. I think. New Zealand, um, isn't there a whole list of them, all the Nordic countries, Germany, blah, blah, blah. Um, but look, I mean, I'm an optimist. This will soon be over. We can meet in person at some stage and yeah, keep on doing what you're doing. Let me know what I and my colleagues can do for you. That's it from me, thanks. Rupa, thank you so much. Now I did quite rightly get an absolute 
slaughtering in, in chat for not knowing how to pronounce your last name and laughing. And I, I don't know if anybody else laughs as a natural disposition to embarrassment, but I certainly do. And I did exactly the same when I couldn't pronounce Bob's last name earlier. Um, you know, sometimes I don't know how to pronounce people's last names and um, I laugh out of embarrassment and I'm human. Um, and if you want to just give me a little telling off in chat, but that's absolutely fine. I can take it on the chin. So um, we do really appreciate every voice escalates this. It's about working together. It doesn't matter which party you're from or anything like that. It's about all working together and government can make really positive changes. And you know, the, the work that Ruth's doing, it's so important, the discrimination. I mean, I was an estate agent. We actively discriminated against people on benefits. I did it before I was a single mem. I didn't realize I was naive, I was ignorant. And, and I think sometimes, you know, we need to forgive the naivety and the ignorance of the people running the country because they haven't experienced it. They haven't lived it. So our job is to raise awareness of that in a really positive way and say, look, these are actually issues and to help educate them to, to realize that there are serious discriminatory issues there that leave us in a situation where you know, if we're in sort of high, we, we, we weren't regulated with how much rent we charged either. So we would literally put people in a position where they needed benefits, where they probably wouldn't have otherwise needed them. Um, you know, so this is me trying to make all of those wrongs right. And I will continue to try and make wrongs right as I go on. Um, but it's active, you know, everybody here is doing such important work in one way or the other to help single parents either practically, physically, emotionally, socially. Um, you know, I applaud you all. I'm just so pleased that you all came on to collaborate today because I know that we've all tried to collaborate in the past. I know we've all been stung and rejected in collaboration. There's no need for that. You know, it's an abundance mindset, not a fear mindset. There are you know, how many single Ruth, you've got the most up to date figures of how many single parents there are in the UK. At the I think there's like there's 2.9 single parents, including those without dependents. Um, 86% are female, yeah. So, so yeah, about 2.9 million, and uh, 10% of which are single dads, so that's 300,000. So, there's this very significant audience there. Um, you know, single, you may, it may not seem like a lot, 10%, but when you think one in four families and that 10% equates to 300,000, you know, there really is a lot of work and we can't do it alone. It needs all of us. We all need to take care of our own corners of the earth, as it were, to support the people in our network. I could not cope with with a thousand people to support. It would be too many and then they would be lost and their voices wouldn't be heard. So we all need to, to celebrate and promote and support each other so that everybody out of those three million people to go, you know, 3,000 of them have all got somebody to talk to. It, do you know what I mean? So I think I've lost Nicola, though. Um, I just want to just hold on for two seconds and see if Nicola's going to come back in. Um, maybe she ran out of time. Obviously, we're all single parents. Maybe there was an issue with the children. Nicola, I'm so sorry if that's the case, but obviously we'll be sharing details to your website as well. And um, she's not coming back, is she? Can anybody else see her? Because I can't. Nobody can see any flags or messages. She's panicking to get in. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it off. I'm really sorry it's overrun, but still we've done quite well. We started 10 minutes late. So in real terms, we've only overrun 10 minutes, which isn't bad. The 12 very passionate people speaking about what they believe in. Um, you know, I'm passionate about supporting all of you. I'm passionate about removing barriers to work. I'm passionate about removing barriers to homes. And I'm passionate about removing barriers to finance that is more difficult to obtain once you've had those barriers to work and homes. They all interlink. We need more corporate responsibility for social impact and economic impact. And um, socially, we all need to stick together, hold our heads up high, show the rest of the UK that we are hardworking, intelligent people. Um, and that, you know, just because it's not always a lifestyle choice, many single parents have either been abused or raped or widowed or divorced through, um, you know, through um, uh, non marital behaviour, whatever. So um, I'm going to end it and stop the recording and obviously I'll make this available I'll tag you all as soon as possible hopefully I'll have the recording live within the hour um thanks to all our guests for coming it's it's really helped us all know that you do all need this and um 
Yeah, so does it, I just want to check, though, before we go, does, do any of you speakers, is there anything else you want to say as a quick closing? Because I don't want to not give you the opportunity to do that. Are you all happy? You've all said you're fit. OK, maybe we can do this bigger sometime later in the year. OK, let's all spend the day together or something. So bye, everybody. I'll stop. I'll leave. And thank you all so much for coming. And let's make some really positive changes.